turning 36 in two weeks. And when I was 18, I was 80 kilos. And when I'm 36, I'm gonna be 160 kilos. Wow. So it's double, twice my age, twice my body weight. Right guys, welcome back to the Beautiful Struggle Podcast with myself, Jay Davis, AKA Magic Eye. This technically is a new podcast, a new day, but it's literally 30 minutes after I filmed the last one with Eddie Hall, because I'm just up the road in Stoke. To be honest, I'm pretty sick of being surrounded by these tall ass units, because I've got another one. It makes me feel uh, this big when I'm around all these guys. Um, not only do I have to film them on a daily, but now I've got to sit opposite them, <laughs> talking to them about their journey, and uh, yeah, just to make me feel a little bit more inferior. Uh, so my next guest, good friends for a few years now, and uh, he reached out to say, well, you're in the area, do you fancy doing one? I was like, yes, I fucking do. <laughs> so uh, introducing to the Beautiful Struggle podcast, Mr. Six Foot Six, the Viking, AKA Josh Mealy. Yes, mate, excited to be here. Welcome to uh, the podcast, mate. Thank, Thank you for uh, inviting me into your beautiful home. Yeah, yeah, we just moved, so to I thought, you know, when yeah. I knew you were doing Eddie. Yeah. Two birds, one stone. Uh, also known as a housewarming party, this is basically. You know? <laughs> it's as bad as it is, it's like so a housewarming. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you for uh, bringing me up. Um, how sings? How are you doing? I'm all right. I am. Um, yeah, I'll probably fall asleep on this podcast because that's the trend of my life at the minute. Yeah, we're uh, <clears throat> four weeks to go. Four weeks of this, left. Of this off season. Yeah, and I won't. I'm counting down. I'm counting down the hours now. How long have you been on uh, off season right now? Pretty. I mean, this is like the third push since I won the Arnold's 22. So. Like pretty much all along. I think I spent like maybe six weeks in a diet just okay. in that time and everything else. Yeah, it's been, I've been over 3.30 probably for the best part of 14 months and I'm now 3.53. So. 3.53. Is this the heaviest you've ever been? Yeah. Last yeah. three weeks have been above 3.50 and yeah. I think the next four weeks will aim to stay there. That's crazy, mate. Yeah, it's not. <clears throat> You know when you sit there for like a long period though, obviously with like lower body weight, just from personal experience, when you've hit a weight and then you sit there, you feel better at it. Has, has that happened with you? A little bit this week, but- Just like, this week? Just this week, yeah. <laughs> like I've started to acclimatize to a degree. Yeah. But yeah, I mean anyone who's pushed like the extremes of body weight, regardless of how heavy you are, like it's, yeah. it's just that productivity through the floor, yeah. the fatigue's like sky high. Um, Everything's effort. I'm out of breath all the time. Yeah. yeah, I get a lot of comments on my YouTube about my breathing. Really, just like, <sighs> bro, you need to be breathing out. So I'm probably this close to the mic. You're gonna get a right earful. Yeah, there's just gonna be noise. Yeah, right just through. white noise of gasping. Yeah, but yeah, that's crazy. But you are looking large. I mean, you came to the door when I when I, when I came to the door, and I was like, yeah, it's a big guy. I remember. Yeah. When I went with Sam, went with Samson after his like f first proper off season push. Yeah. And it was a similar experience when you came to the door there. <laughs> I'll like, tell you that comparison all I, day long. I tell you what made you look a little bit bigger though, the fact that you've got like, was it three little- uh, Yeah, two trials of the palm. Two, so, yeah, yeah. small dogs. It's like a bodybuilder standard, isn't it? The Definitely. smaller the dog- The bigger the, the man. The bigger the yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, So um, I'd love to have them in here, but they would be barking their heads off. Yeah. They're, not, they're not great with they, uh, new people. They looked like they wanted to rip my head off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> savage. But it was just sort of Welsh, but- uh, Yeah, no, nah, it's just good you. <laughs> it's just good you. Mad. So with, um, obviously right now, you are four weeks away yeah. um, from prep. Or is from it what do the cool kids call it? My health phase, my health phase, my sorry. Pre prep. The pre prep the health, pre -prep health, health phase. phase. How silly of me. Um, so, yeah, we'll spend eight weeks there, and then that's going to give me, uh, I think it's a 17, 18, 17, 18 week run through till the first plan show, which is um, in Italy. The I don't even know what shows there are, I just said it on the calendar Italy. Italy. I'm doing Italy. Italy, UK, France in September. Okay. And then that'll be. Me done, see you later. Done forever and done, ever. Done forever, yeah. Yeah, genuinely, like, it's, uh, I mean, me and Jamie talked about it a lot when we were training together, just, yeah. you know, that 
it's this point that we're not we don't like is the worst yeah and it's also the worst for your health so like of course um you know i'm 36 and although that's still kind of young i've been doing it since i was competing since i was 22 mm -hmm. so it's uh it's a long run and also just in terms of what what i have achieved and what the potential to achieve from this point on is okay risk reward just so, isn't in my favor yeah so i, I don't i don't want to like as much as i love bodybuilding i don't ever want to compete without knowing that i've given every single phase my 100 mm -hmm. so if i'm not willing to push up yeah again there's just no point yeah um and yeah like every, every single like day I don't, it might sound negative to some people, but like for me, it's a positive. It's quite a nice feeling. I think some people struggle to walk away. Like I'm, I'm definitely feeling. I know I'll struggle with like the mental aspect of identity when it comes to it, but yeah. in terms of the actual the reasons behind it, I'm very mm. content with like my, my choice. Yeah. Have you have you spent like a long time like thinking of this? It's just been on, like if to be honest, if I hadn't have won the pro card in 22, it would have been pretty close to saying yeah you know i think maybe it's like i've, I've done my best yeah I've done well yeah but i'm not sure like it's in me yeah okay and i suppose because of that like i, I didn't want to be someone who just got the pro card and then stepped away i at least want to experience the pro league yeah of course, not yeah. just from a personal point of view but you know if in future you know i'm coaching athletes of that standard so i can you know relate and know yeah what it's like have that backstage experience that on hand so yeah yeah three shows i'll take me to 30 for the career so my nice, shows. Nice, nice, nice number, nice so round number yeah. all, the stars are aligned and yeah. and then i can just step back and watch everyone else smash it and yeah you know hopefully just up my game even more on the coach inside yes you yeah. know my, my plans aren't you know like some guys it's bodybuilding is done and then it's like a complete yeah. direction change i'm just not gonna push the weight up or come down i'm just gonna train yeah um and love it and like stay in shape yeah just hopefully yeah, yeah feel good yeah, get a little bit fitter but that will come just by being lighter yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not hard right now um <laughs> so yeah I'm, I'm 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 looking forward to the journey ahead i can't wait for prep mm -hmm. um and I'm, I'm excited for the challenge and the kind of experience yeah. of that after just uh, yeah i think obviously from witnessing other people that have been able to walk away Jamie being one of them, obviously yeah, yeah. he's walked away and doing well on the gladiators, big up to the yeah, giant. Definitely. Um, he's made a success of walking away, not in terms of like what he's doing now with yeah, gladiators, yeah. but in terms of like mentally separating himself from what he was yeah. and what he'd always known. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if you followed my stuff. I kind of said, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. And then I've seen that. Now, not. now I'm back in. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, I'm doing it for a it's not a career thing it's yeah. just literally I'm, I'm doing it while I can yeah, yeah, yeah. and obviously I'm not doing it to the same level so um, and you've not been doing it as, too, as, as long exactly. you know, I had this conversation literally last night with a client who exactly the same yeah you know I, I can't what, what sparked you to step away did you get ill really ill yeah then, so exactly um, the same as yeah. this guy like really ill just thought you know what I've got wife kids mm -hmm. is this worth it took three two three months and was then like still got that itch yes. and you yeah. know i know and like it's that kind of almost knee-jerk reaction when you get ill and of course being yeah. a bodybuilder is not going to be conducive to no. being healthy so you sort of like oh shit i'll just pull back and yeah, then yeah. You, you know and, and I, I know that i haven't got that in me which is why i know it's the right thing right okay. you know what i mean yeah. like i've no i've no itch there's no itch, <laughs> there's there's no itch. itch. So it's getting scratched and it's done and i don't want to do but you never know until you're in the situation this is also true this is also uh, true. But, you know, fingers crossed the plan is like what, what you've set out and what you want to do afterwards is what you're able to do. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be good to witness, mate. I'm looking forward to documenting it because, yeah. yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of, like, it's that mental, for me, like, I'm just interested about the mental challenges, mm. you know, the lack of the identity. Yes. And, you know, even like I'm 352, 353, I'm... Um, still like the skinny kid in my head so when i'm actually like downsizing it's yeah. going to be very weird to know how i'll cope how, how you process it yeah, it yeah yeah so yeah um, and again but it, it needs to be done yeah. you know everyone's really comes to an end of course yeah. like i think at the point like oh shit. that was his uh, alarm to wake up for the podcast yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> well, that's actually for a meal, but we're ahead of schedule today. Oh, so there we go. Um, <laughs> professional bodybuilder life, um, which has thrown me completely. But yeah, no, I'm 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 very excited for yeah the future and the what's to come. You you just mentioned the the, the skinny kid. Yeah. And, uh, when I put the <clears throat> Q and A post up, I thought when I, I went on your profile. I looked to see if I had any pictures of my Dropbox folder, but I couldn't find any yeah. from when I've been shooting yourself yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in Giants Gym. And then um, I saw your transformation picture. Yeah. That's pretty fucking impressive. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's the one. And that's where, like, you know, that's that's what I still see sometimes, yeah. which is mental. It's like, crazy, it, isn't it? You know, the, I know, like, I've got clients who come from a fat background and they're sort of, you know, paranoia over that and, and mine's completely opposite yeah um but i'm i'm proud like i literally did a video the other day because i'm turning 36 in two weeks and when i was 18 i was 80 kilos and when yeah. i'm 36 i'm gonna be 160 kilos wow. so it's double twice my age twice my body weight yeah um it's not bad going yeah that's fucking but, sick and so when you were um let's if we on the the topic of yeah. the first picture then how old were you in that first shot do you say eight? i think i was 18, 18 yeah yeah so what were you kind of doing around that time in terms of like so it's just before uni yeah and i went to uni as a swimmer so that was Another like a swimmer yeah just yeah a yeah swimmer. i know <laughs> well I, I, like, I competed in the same comps as eddie ah. um i don't think we ever competed in the same race but i remember like he was really good i don't mm. i'm sure he told you like I mean, Eddie, clearly from what he's done, is like a bit of a phenom, whatever he chooses to do. That's exactly what I said, called him on the podcast, yeah, phenom. like, whatever he chooses to do, he has that kind of ability. Mm. But I remember, like, nationals is like, you know, national age group championships is like the peak of British women as a, as a kid. Yeah. And just getting there was like, that was my kind of win. I had, like, you know, I competed, I think I got to a final. And I remember like some years, like Eddie being there, and there was a kid who used to train with me, and he did like the same race. And Eddie, like, almost just like he's taking the piss, like, and then just smoked him. Yeah. And it, was, it was crazy, and I just thought, who is this kid? And then obviously he went away. And then he came back one year, and he looked like just scary as fuck. Jacked. Yeah. <laughs> Big time, and I think he did like the fifty, which is just like one lane, and just smashed it. Yeah, and then obviously he went on to just dominate strong man. Yeah, he, he was uh, telling me that uh, he got put to a point where he had to, he, he hated swimming. Yeah, and then he walked. Uh, it happened to a lot of like a lot. I mean, it's so full on, and like I mean, I credit, and I'm sure he probably credits a lot of his mindset to dedication around it. Like without. You know, when you're getting up at 12 years old at 4 a.m. to train for two hours, yeah, like that instills a certain level of work ethic, yeah, um, and uh, that certainly carried me through well. Yeah, so that was like when you were in uni then, yeah. swimming. Did um, did you like live a tr traditional uni life where you partying as well? Or? So swimming, swimming was a funny one. It was because we were swimming kind of four training like 40 hours a week pretty mm -hmm. much only had like saturday yeah. and saturday was just like an absolute like you know six nights crammed into one kind oh, of really? like, yeah just catching up full on yeah um and i think that's probably part of the reason i don't drink now because yeah. not only that but i stopped swimming i won't i won't use the word retire because i don't think that was quite that good but i stopped <laughs> swimming in my second year of uni yeah midway through and then the next like year and a half was like full on just like damage, yeah. living your life yeah like I, I, that's when I got into the gym so like I train um, but you know when you're training uh, as a swimmer you know maybe four hours a day and then all of a sudden you're not and you go into the gym maybe an hour and a half two hours a day mm. got loads of time yeah you yeah. know and you, loads of recovery is great and then, yeah yeah that was uh, so you made up for it yeah what did you study in uni sports science sports science yeah. standard I know yeah. I didn't know what else to do like, yeah. I didn't have any passion about you, anything you were sport you were yeah. swimmer I liked yeah. sport I liked swimming I liked yeah. you know that sort of the, around that academic side but I was never kind of went to uni because like I think in my in my family it's kind of the, the thing it was a do. done thing yeah right. so unfortunately the fees weren't quite what they are now no what uni did you go to? Loughborough oh Loughborough yeah, as yeah. well yeah yeah it's a few people that I've kind of worked with that have gone to Loughborough because yeah. like Rich Ellis was he there <coughs> yeah, yeah. with it. Yeah. So, so Rich is, let's talk about Rich because um, in fact one of the questions I got that would touch on it is about yeah. inspirations yeah. within bodybuilding and although he's not a bodybuilder, Rich is the reason I want to do a massive because Rich worked in the gym yeah. and I remember when I walked in the gym as a swimmer, I was like who the fuck's that guy? He's like, a big boy. What is he? that? Like, I've never seen anything yeah. like it. 
Um, and I think his nickname, I don't know if he knew this, but like everyone used to call him Rhino. And like, I was like, fuck it, I just wanna, I just wanna be, be like him. Like, yeah. it's amazing. And this is like peak strength as well. So he'd be like doing like decline with like 260 for reps and like squatting, yeah. hated deadlifts, but squatting, bent over rows, just like obscene shit. Yeah. Um, and then when I graduated, I got a job out of the uni just like as a casual fitness instructor mm. so I worked alongside him for a little bit oh, yeah. and after a period I was like can I, can I train with you mate? <laughs> and it's like you know which is like he's so nice he's like of course yeah. and like and that then like just set the the foundations of yeah. things like in play so he was kind of like one of the guys you looked up he's to a, he's a big mentor and I, I know he will never say that because he's just so oh, unassuming yeah. and humble and he yes. just thinks like nothing of it and, like, I love Rich because he's so like he influenced everyone though. Yeah. Like Jordan, yeah. Bish obviously went through Adam Bishop, strong yeah. man. Um, like anyone who's gone on to, you know, Ross Edgley. Yeah. Like like they they were they were in uni together. Um, he's like the most underrated <laughs> like figurehead. Yeah. <laughs> and he just he's so detracted from it all. He just doesn't get yeah. involved. He does his own thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I bumped into him. You probably you saw him there down at the JP yeah. gym the other week, innit? And I hadn't seen him for so long. I was like, Rich, what's happening? And he's just the same, the same yeah. guy. He's he's a bit more broken, I think. Yeah. Just from yeah, like, yeah. Well, he started to break like, when when I kind of moved away from the, the uni side of the work side. Of yeah. Things. yeah, yeah. But but he's still like pounding the weights though. Mate, isn't it just he? doesn't stop. It's great. Yeah, it's just, it's just someone who loves it. And again, that's like I think having not only his his knowledge and like kind of learning just how to train hard. Mm. That almost kind of subconscious just enjoyment for it yeah. like just kind of seeped into me a little bit yeah yeah because like I said I don't ever plan on stop training like yeah, I, 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 it's what I do that's yeah. what I love yes. I just don't love being a fat fucker <laughs> <laughs> just to come to balance come to balance <laughs> strong it it sounds good thanks yeah so that was Loughborough Did, was Jordan in Loughborough when you were there then? yeah so Jordan was a year below me um, oh. and Adam as well I think was a year below me um so yeah, like I, I didn't know Jordan as much. Yeah. Um, again, even then he was you know strong as shit. I just yeah. remember this like kind of. I mean, he's so in, he was so intense even then, like kind of angry looking dude just coming into the gym and like <laughs> tearing shit off the floor and all sorts. Um, yeah. But he was always that nice, like, and it was just obviously as I started getting a bit more into bodybuilding, there was a bit more of a sort of common ground. So yeah, because initially yeah. I was just like fucking all these people, like yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous. Um, yeah, well, that's a cool story, man. That left bro kicking out some like crazy hey, that, that little era there was, yeah. was, a, was a good one, yeah. So it was like yourself, Jordan, Corin was it as well? Corin, yeah, Corin. Like, I, I did kickboxing with Corin. Oh, like, no. when I finished swimming, I was like, I don't know what to do. I was like, I try kickboxing, I'm, you know, I'm like the most unaggressive guy ever. I did it for like half a term, I was yeah. like, it's just it's not for me. I can't, like, I got put with some guy who genuinely just enjoyed like kicking the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah. Like they give you like a drill and I'll be like, that's not the drill, you're yeah. just kicking me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I stole that pretty quick. Yeah, I didn't realize um, you did the, the kickboxing. Yeah, stuff. this was Previously. like pre, they, they, I reckon Jordan and Corey maybe just getting together at this point. Mm. So like before she had that kind of real, she found that direction and that yeah. sort of passion. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's a mad pool of people. I, know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's plenty of others that I'm sure I'm forgetting, but yeah, yeah. Off the top of my that's, head. Some, that's some big names though. Yeah, yeah. Some big names. So you did. How long were you in Left before? Too long. <laughs> I, was, I mean, I was there until November, <laughs> mate. Longer than your current off season, because <laughs> that's too long. Feels like it. Uh, no, like yeah. I mean, so I moved in November here from Loughborough. So obviously, I did uni, graduated in. 2009 then got a job in the gym at that point like I'd started training and I just like all I knew was I loved to train I didn't yeah. really have anything else so I was like okay there's really easy casual gym work like it was a joke you just sort of like sat in the gym and you had your food when you want and like I basically if anyone on a holiday I'd just be like just tell me and I'll like take your shift off you just because so, you know like, you're not doing anything yeah I live like five minutes away so it'd be like three hour shift six hour shift yeah. just keep, keep my food bill going over keep everything ticking over um, I did that for like probably four years and then well, but within that time I started competing and like started second the, the second two years started doing quite well yeah um, 
and then obviously I went over to Mark at M10 as a PT yes because we bumped on, into each other one day um, I think I was doing like a sampling for my sponsor at the time and he was like where are you from and I was like oh after and he was like what do you do and I was like well I'm qualified PT but I just like sit around the gym in a minute and he was like pretty much like do you want a job and I was like yeah <laughs> you know so this was uh, before the you know the hardcore interview process <laughs> just like yeah. so I just pretty much walked in there like a month later really and nice. just started started PT and obviously yeah. that set me up great because the Again, I suppose when I think about it, like I've been so lucky with who I've been surrounded with. You know, at that point, there was Mark, James, and then Cal joined maybe like a year after me, two years yeah. after me. Mm. And then there was like a two year period where it was just like a cultivation of like knowledge mm. and training and just like, just a really cool like boys yeah. club effectively. Yeah because um, that was when Mark competed and that was when like yeah like everyone was proper into it yeah. he was coached by Milos and Milos came over to seminars B-Pack B -Pack came over to seminars yeah that's cool um, and then yeah and then whenever it was 2019 online work took off so I was like I was so nervous so you when were, I told Mark you, so you were up there till you were there till 2019, 2019 yeah. so how long was that from uni how many years I think I was there for about three or four years yeah, yeah. Three, four years. so yeah so I was for about 26 I was there and then I probably must have been there till like 29, 30. Mm. No, maybe a bit longer. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Time fucking flies. 2019 and then what, you went on like full yeah. on? Like yeah, it was just getting to the point where things were like going well and um, I just had, oh well, because again, it, everything I've done, I've always like, bodybuilding's always been my number one and Mark yeah. always knew that. Yeah. He always like accepted that with me probably more than some of the others because that's, I came in as a bodybuilder. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, the first job I got facilitated bodybuilding really well. M10 facilitated bodybuilding really well. And then I obviously just got to the point where if I needed to be even more selfish with it, mm. I needed more freedom of time. So online work was perfect. And yeah. I, I built up a client base that kind of accommodated that. So then I moved. How many clients did you have at that time to, to make the switch? I think I had like 30 or so. Yeah. Like, I, I'm someone who like, has, I'm the least materialistic person going. Like this place here is all I've ever wanted in terms of like something tangible. Okay. Like, my life plan is simple. Pay this mortgage off, just enjoy time with the vet and the dogs and like, yeah. you know, be happy and healthy. Um, so I, I got by no problems with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then just, and then it built up pretty quick and then obviously lockdown happened and I shut my pants, but actually that worked out fine. Um, <laughs> shut my pants. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Was, that was, you were at Jamie's at that point, weren't you? So I did the first six to eight months, if not more, in my flat. Oh, you did? I remember seeing this yeah. in the stories. Because I did a podcast with Jamie. What, what podcast were they doing? The big, um... British muscle. Yeah, James, Jamie. Cuba. Cuba. Yeah. And I said on that, I'm just training like, I think I might even showed them my, yeah. my gym, it's on the spare room. I, I remember seeing that. Yeah. 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 And uh, and then after that, Jamie messaged and was like, oh, I didn't actually realise you were genuinely training there. Like I thought, yeah. probably had someone used to doing it for like content. I was like, no. He was like, I'll oh, come over. And then that was, that was fantastic. And then we, that was again like a massive yeah. period of my, my bodybuilding development. Were you quite you living quite close to? Yeah, the, like, the, kind of half an hour away or so. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that was like a, a nice little safe haven for you. Yeah, guess, that was fantastic. Training. And then obviously, I don't think we trained together initially, mm. and then we we hooked up and we spent like two two years solid pretty much every yeah, session. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we had a really good run, and I've never had a training partner before. And how like, how did that? feel for yourself with like going from no training partner because you're quite a I would call you a bit of an introvert no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm an only child I'm like you know although I'm I'd like to think kind of people know me in the industry the people probably don't know much apart from what like the surface value yes because they're just they're like I'm very happy in yeah. my own space like yeah. I won't go out of my way to talk about myself or yeah, yeah. you know off podcast obviously um, <laughs> <laughs> half an hour half an hour into Wolfling um, so no I mean like Jamie we've just gone so well yeah and like we both off it was initially when it was me Jamie and Jimmy that yeah. was when Jimmy was doing the fucking crazy like three hour 
four hour five hour round, round trips, trips to yeah. fucking train five times a week or whatever mad insane mad. And like I, I just I, I remember thinking like I'm not committed like I'm not like I, if that was like my option like I would I would not have done what he was doing <laughs> it was I didn't really understand the thought process behind I mean obviously I, I got it that he was coming down with you boys and we yeah, trained yeah. together but the, the because I do the same drives. Yeah, yeah. But for work, yeah. I'm earning and not every. The, well, yeah, I suppose they do do every day, but like. Well, yeah, but maybe like say four days yeah, a week. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like that's dedication. Um, that was just to like be at the gym for yeah, like two and a half hours. Yeah. Like, I mean, um, obviously it paid off because being around you boys, you know, he ended up getting. He has ended up. Yeah, I, mean, I think he would have, regardless. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm not saying it's down to you boys, yeah. but. The environment that, definitely helps. No, nah, that was really like that was a, a, a really cool setup, and then and then I think it did clock on like after lockdown. He was like, "This is a bit retarded." Yeah, <laughs> it's like I'm gonna step back. Yeah. So then we just cracked on together, and then we had yeah two two full preps because we did just time our off season the preps like yeah. the same, and and that was perfect because we just I remember on prep we'd like walk into the gym. Some days we'd have some energy and have a chat, and other days it would just be like silence. Silence, yeah. Start a train, and then maybe like twenty minutes in, be like, "You're right." <laughs> <laughs> what was um, what did you feel about you know after lockdown? Because <clears throat> obviously you were training in, in lockdown, yeah, and yeah. obviously I was going up there to film and stuff. And then obviously the gym opened back up, yeah. and there was there was people back in that yeah. gym. Because I know how Jamie felt. How yeah. did you feel? I mean, I didn't mind it too, like, because it wasn't my gym, like, it wasn't my space, like, I felt as I'm as much of a guest as anyone, you know what I mean, yeah. that's how I saw it, um, but, like, when he said and suggested, like, I might make it private, I was like, mm, I can see why. Yeah, just we'll, pushing him over. We'll yeah, be yeah. bad idea, like, yeah. we could do, we could like, absolutely smash this, yeah, yeah. And, then he, and then he did, and then again, that was, that was, yeah. I don't really. I haven't, I haven't stepped back to think about how that actually kind of cool certain periods. Of, it was like yeah, that, 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 that time yeah, at yeah. that gym. Just having that place to yourself. Yeah, was fucking cool, man. It's very like uh, it, I don't know. It, it feels like it's something from like the old like nineties or something. No, like, it, was, it, was, it was mega as well, and especially it's like that twenty two prep was what got me my pro card. Like yeah. you know, I can credit a lot to it. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a one man band in terms of myself, but like having the ability, like I just remember being so happy to be in a space, a place with zero people outside yeah. the J. Yeah. And just crack on. Yeah. Like yeah. again, like for my personality, absolutely perfect. And the dynamic of the, the both of you, obviously, both being absolutely fucking monsters yeah. in terms of like height and everything as well. So I suppose having him. To a certain degree, not not that he was someone, but maybe he was someone that you were looking up to, I guess. Massively, he was like, a pro. yeah, like to see how he was doing, like, and how he pushed, and just seeing his development was, you know, I think there's there's people who like kind of show you what's possible, and like sometimes you can't fathom what's possible until, yeah. I know sometimes I'll get guys like taller guys message me now and be like, you know, because of you, like. I appreciate what like could be achievable and yes. I think yeah. you know sometimes when you don't have an idea then you don't know what you can and can't do yeah. And, yeah. and having Jamie there and seeing it every day and just being like fucking hell like this, this is that's possible. a big boy and like you know just the proportions and the shape and everything which yeah. is all going to be individual but yeah that was something that I, I thoroughly kind of embraced yeah yeah with um with obviously speaking about like your structure yeah being six foot six, six, yeah, six, six, foot yeah. six. So, when you have like clients come to you, and um, I'm, I'm assuming you get like a lot of tall guys come yeah, to you well, as well, because yeah, you guys, think you've yeah. got the, the secret to making yeah, tall guys massive. <laughs> when the when you obviously put the plans in place and you you know you show them what you have to do, because yeah. I don't know what you boys have to yeah. do. Do you ever get like is there any kind of backtracking with it like with with some guys i mean i like I, I i always try and get a good gauge of people beforehand yeah um so then like if ever i think someone might i don't tend to do like calls because okay. i think sometimes people will just do a call for the sake of doing a call yeah um, you know, both from a coach's point of view like oh, i'll do a call because it sounds cool when yeah. i actually don't need to like the amount of guys i get and I'll send them a questionnaire and they'll send it back and I'm, I'm like, that's cool, you're good to go. They're like, yep, yeah. and then we're good. But <clears throat> if, and it's happened on a few occasions, I get like a vibe, I'll, I'll set up a call and then I can be more honest and, yeah. you know, really get a feel. And I'm quite happy to say, like, I don't think 
don't think you're, you're in the right place it. or you're like I'm mm. in I'm the right person to kind of feed yeah. feed you there but yeah like people Jordan posted on his story the other day so I think someone asked him a question about tall guys and legs and he like added me in it oh did he and um and I, and I just kind of said it's probably my biggest pet peeve is when people just think they can't do things yeah it just takes longer just takes longer yeah. and, and, and that's the last thing anyone wants to hear it, yeah everyone wants to overnight don't they yeah yeah well I said that on the the um, noodle the pot noodle, noodle do you like that yeah, one yeah <laughs> simply out yeah, of order it couldn't be more, it couldn't be more true like, yeah yeah and it's just something that I'm constantly reminding a lot of people yeah you know both in and out of work and I guess you you get it from like you know general guys you know my height whatever five eight five nine when they come into you and they're saying they're struggling with something yeah. and, and you probably like mate you don't know the half like so what that's yeah. probably not I, I like to think I'm quite like an empathetic coach like I try I try to get on everyone's level yeah and just I like the psychology of coaching like mm-hmm. I like to try and get in see what makes people tick to yeah. kind of say the right things because yeah. some people at the end of the day do need babysitting mm-hmm. and some people just need like sometimes I'll send messages and I'm like I'm not sure you're going to stay with me after this message, message yeah. but like I normally gauge it right and they feed really well off of it yeah um, I don't think it's, maybe it happened like once or twice where I've kind of got a like oh are you serious <laughs> yeah I mean, kind of yeah I think you like you said you've got to just find the right way of triggering someone to, yeah. to, to actually just follow to realise what's needed yeah, yeah. Uh, that's very cool that's very cool so with um on the topic of like what you have to do as a six foot six bodybuilder yeah. how many like calories are you consuming right now in off season so like I, I don't think my, my food isn't as high as like a lot of guys um, it's, I think we're about six and a half seven thousand on a training day and like five and a half six on a non mm-hmm. so you know a lot of people hear that and like and when I posted like my day of eating a lot of people were like I oh, would have thought you needed to eat more yeah um, but I also think and there's definitely a tendency, and I've fallen into this trap before. Like I'm, I'm sure I pushed like eight thousand calories in, you know, quite a few years ago, just because I was in off season, and I was like, I'm just going to keep eating more yeah. every week. So what, what to change? I just eat more. Yeah. I just eat more, and you just get fatter and fatter, and feel shit and shit. Yeah, yeah. So I like to find that point where the scales are going up. But it's not like I do an average average weight across the week, and if that's going up by, at this point, kind of half a pound. Or even holding now, like I'm happy mm-hmm. because you know over pushing I think is as detrimental as not eating enough. You know, you just yeah. kill your digestion and then you can't eat. Yeah. What you do and you just end up, you know, pissing out your ass. So, yeah. <laughs> so you coach yourself, innit? Yeah, yeah. Always been coached by yourself. So the first two show, the first two seasons I did, 2010, 2012, I had the same coach, um, Dross. I'm not going to butcher his second name. No, I'm not. No. Um, <laughs> he's, uh, he, he was a bodybuilder at the time. He, um, we did UK BF together. He was like uh, a lightweight maybe. Um, I wish he stuck with it. Like his, his shape, I'm sure there's photos out there. His shape was unreal. Rich, again, like was a good, Rich actually put me in touch with him when I said like, um, I might like well I think, I think Rich might have said do you ever thought about competing and I was like I wouldn't, I wouldn't know where to start and he was like ask Ross yeah. Ross like charged me I don't know if it was per month or just for like the prep do you know what I mean yeah. 16 weeks um, and I remember like the, the second prep we did 2012 I had like gone in quite hard on my off season and turned up to him and like the first um, the first kind of update was the start of prep was two hours cardio a day Oh wow! <laughs> For sixteen weeks, <laughs> but I mean, like, this is what I loved. Like it was old school. It was like you yeah. know, fish, sweet potato, like, and I, a lot of guys. I think Nate talked about it. Like some of his like early coaches, like that old school approach. Yeah, sure, it's not fun. It's arguably not optimal. Hashtag, <laughs> but it instills a work ethic that will carry you through. Yeah, and it also gets results. It's just hard. It's just hard, yeah. Um, so I, I remember finishing that prep and knowing two things. One, I'm quite happy to prep myself. <laughs> yeah, okay. And two, I can do whatever I need to do regardless of, you know, the situation. Because yeah. I've just done, you know, I don't know if cardio went up, but it certainly didn't go down. Was it a horrendous prep? It, I mean, I don't remember it being horrible, but I don't really, I mean, it's 11 years ago, mate. I still remember what happened this morning. So, <laughs> um, 
it was it was just yeah one of those you, you got it done and uh, and I, I, I was a good like I'm not a good client I wouldn't be a good client which is why I coach myself I, I kind of I've learned too much about my own how what I like and how what works yeah. like if someone took the reins I'd annoy them because it would be I'm not sure about this you'd be constantly like, yeah like, I look, like people are like how do you coach yourself do you not overthink it I would overthink it more if someone else was right, so I'd be like okay. I'm not sure if that's the right call yeah fair play to um, for being able to do it yourself especially in like the with the more trickier moments of prep yeah like I mean it is one of the things that I'm like I'm proudest of mm. like when I when I finish this and I always like I never I never was a road to pro kind of guy like I thought uh, your YouTube series with Sam was uh, road to pro uh, road to pro debut fucking like <laughs> final chapter I'm out of it um <laughs> But like I've never been someone who really like th- thought the pro card was a, was an option. But when I started to kind of realise in that sort of twenty twenty one period that it could be, I just remember being really inspired by the fact that I could do this on my own. Yeah. Like because I'm not someone blessed with incredible genetics. You know, you look at the development of some guys and where they started. Like that skinny picture. That's not someone who's you see and think that's like a future Olympia yeah. like you see Jay Cutler when he was 18 and you see Josh Rainey when he was 18 yeah, there's a bit of a difference yeah um, so I was like that would be really cool if I could do it so mm. yeah and you've done it mate I've done it and uh, yeah. it's just the, the last lap for you last push it? yeah last just lap. learned a lot along the way so I'm kind of again constantly learning and that's what's kept me really kind of passionate about it because yeah. it's that excitement to learn try new things be a guinea pig I think it makes me a better coach um, I know people speak about getting coaches so you can learn from them completely get that and I mean I, I'm that for some quite a few people but mm. I get a lot of kind of forced learning through trialling things myself and yeah. then like looking into them more and um, it just keeps me super engaged yeah, because yeah. when I competed in 2014 I nearly like it was basically if I don't prep myself I'm not going to compete Okay. So, because I wanted like more than the challenge of just following a plan, I knew I could do that, mm-hmm. but I wanted to know if I could do it myself. Yeah. And then that, that season just happened to go really well, and I was like, just set the tone for the rest. Yeah, of the, uh, we'll run with this yeah. for as long as we can. Yeah. Yeah, that's wicked, mate. Um, how long have you and uh, have been together now? Um, five years. So she's obviously seen the last five years of you. Uh, yeah working towards the pro card turning pro yeah and then yeah. Uh, how is she involved in the fitness industry so she's competed previously yeah. she did um, she done on Miami Pro WBFF and she did two bros when they first oh, yeah. came out um, but she's just like she got a little bit sick of just the environment of competing mm. in some of the kind of attitudes around it and, and what not yeah. Yeah. yeah and and to be honest like she looks fucking incredible uh, like year round now so like okay. from a personal perverted point of view I fucking love it like it's uh, <laughs> I think anyone will agree and she'll say the same like when I'm like balls deep in prep and got like walnut ass, she's like it's not my favourite look do you know what I mean yeah. likewise when she's like super lean I'm yes. like you know I want a, I like a bit more of a full, full woman and, yeah. and yeah so she's just kind of I'm sure she does it for me, but she does it for herself. But <laughs> I'm winning, mate. <laughs> does she? So obviously, because she's competed in the, in the past, she understands like the. the she gets it. She gets it. Like I am, I think because again, I coach myself. Like I am so full on, mm. um, and I am looking forward to because this is like we've only been living together since November. Like we've never lived together before. Oh, this is your first house together. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So, um, and, it, and again, like it's going. It's incredible so far. But like just the. I'm so full on that it's always like hard on prep mm. just like I just because I I think because of my introvert nature like I just withdraw even more yeah and then there's that like do you actually like have feelings for me because yeah. like, I just I just go numb mm. especially towards the back end especially when you throw in some extra fucking compounds that aren't necessarily the best for kind of mental clarity yeah um, I just shut down <laughs> and it must suck it must and like yeah. and I, I feel it like you know two weeks after I finish prep and the fog clears and you don't realise till you're out of it like you know on prep it's such a gradual process yeah, of yeah. shutting down and you come back quite quickly after and you're like fucking hell I was not that myself was dick, yeah. yeah not necessarily like going out of my way to be a dick like I'm, I'm not you know confrontational I'm not argumentative but I'm just 
It's like, it's like oh, do you love me? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Like, it's just like getting blood out of a stone and it's yeah, just like, yeah. It's, it, it, it's, yeah it does it does stuff for her but yeah. she, she gets it like she pretty much just like goes okay I know what's coming yeah. and I'm just going to kind of keep myself a bit busier than normal I think if you're prepared for it if you've had like the conversation beforehand yeah. and you you know she knows it's coming you know it's coming yeah. and I'll always try and like now kind of be ahead of it slightly and be like I think I'm starting to feel like so just if I'm not Just quite yeah if I'm not quite the same level of love <laughs> yeah. it's not because I don't it's because I haven't got it in me yeah yeah buckle up yeah here we Back. go business enterprise yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and then again like the, the, it's the last one babe so That's, yeah at the moment no. so it's all told it's, a, it's all the pretense just telling her <laughs> yeah. just put it out there yeah, I've got like seven years left by hand that's, that's right <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm done. I'm done now. Yeah. And then three done, months later, done till next year. Anyway, done till next year. <laughs> yeah, that's class. So you've got three shows planned. Yeah, I think, I think I might be there in Italy. Okay, cool. Potentially. Yeah. So that'll be cool to see, mate. Yeah, I think like I, I'll be honest, mate. Like I need to speak to someone because I don't know. I need to get a pro card. I need to know how to enter these shows. <laughs> like I, I just thought this other day. I thought the Arnold was really easy because it was all there. Yeah. Like they gave it me. I was like, I've got a I don't even know how to email about these things. So have you not done your pro card yet? No, 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 I'm gonna like I'll probably message Cal and be like, who do I talk to? Yeah, you probably need to suit that suit. Because the thing is as well is like I doubt you're gonna watch this, but I don't feel like I'm like Ian's favourite person, so like I don't know if like if I message him I don't know how responsive he'd be to it. Ah, I'm sure he'd be fine. Yeah, I'm sure he'd be fine. It's in his interest for you to sort yeah, of get through the yeah, um, But no, I am I'm looking forward to it big time. Uh and I think, like, on Nate's podcast, it made me laugh because I think we're pretty much doing the same shows. Now, that'll be a very cool moment. Yeah. That'll be... Because uh... that, again, like, you know, our... As you said, I won't repeat it. Just watch his podcast. People. Watch the Nathan podcast. Yeah, watch the Nathan Styles. Big man. Um, but everything, like, we've been through... Yeah. To then finish... Obviously, his chapters and his journey is continuing, but to be there for kind of with him for my last push is yeah. pretty fucking cool it's a full circle moment I th- I'm not sure if I said that on yeah, the podcast yeah, it it's, like, it's and it's it's very nice to see I said this on the podcast as well I'll repeat myself but it's nice to see that you boys have like, kept that relationship even yeah. though obviously you've gone to another coach because we've seen it so much yeah yeah it's just that yeah, I, I, I'm, 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 I've not got time for no. animosity and no, I couldn't no. even if I wanted to hate Nate how can you man especially like, he's yeah. like the nicest guy ever exactly and yeah. like I, I've got a lot like I, I messaged him after watching his podcast because the thing yeah. is that I get the impression I certainly from people I've worked with in the past like when you work with a coach they can some be some, and after that's finished they could be quite reluctant to give you credit and I don't do it for credit but like it's nice to be acknowledged so yes. like you know for him to then go out of his way on that podcast and talk about me as he did mm. meant a lot so big up big ups big, up. big ups to the big styles um, right I think we're approaching like the last section in my head the last, hey, it's good man it's good it's organic flowing there's no prep done today because I've been prepping notes and everything for the last couple of episodes but he caught, ah, me, fuck off, it. caught me off guard so we're fucking <laughs> winging it, fucking winging it. Um, so plans for the future after this last chapter apart from the fact that you're going to come back next year <laughs> um, coaching is obviously going to be like the, the a, a big not the main focus because it obviously is a focus now but like yeah. a, a bigger focus on coaching yeah, that, that's such a good way of putting it because like I feel like when I say oh like I want to put more time into coaching it makes it sound like a part time coach like I'm a full time coach it's happens because of coaching like everything I've got is because of coaching Yeah. so it's, it's a passion and it's a, but as I said as well like I've always been a bodybuilder first and I've never, you know, let my standards, personal standards slip. Mm. Um, you know, I think I give the best service to my clients, but I'm still putting myself kind of as close to the top of the tree as I can. Yeah. So to be able to step back and just do kind of certain things like, you know, train with clients more often. Mm. You know, like I'm extremely selfish with my training because I only have X number of opportunities between of now and my shows to, to make progress and to have good sessions. and you know, to risk having a longer session or a worse session, not due to the client, but just due to the nature of training with someone new. Mm -hmm. It's not the return isn't worth it. So like things like that, I'm looking forward to, because again, I think that elevates the the kind of, 
the, the service people get or the experience people get probably yeah. more you yeah, know yeah. service doesn't really change but the experience and, uh, and and again I'm hoping to start to sort of vicariously you know live through some of my guys as well and be like you know yes let's train together and yeah. you've got to fucking go for this now because I can't so. <laughs> you'd be that old guy like yeah, yeah. Mickey off rocking yeah, Rocky yeah. <laughs> um, I competed against one well not against him were we, were we against no alongside him he was in a different class oh. um, Ben Oh, Ben, yeah, yeah. Big tall Ben. Yeah, yeah. Is he still with, with you? Yeah, he's still So that was exactly what I was talking about when you said earlier you stopped. So, yeah, he got ill ah, uh, in quite did. a similar fashion. Yeah. Um, and while his uh, kind of um, focus is less towards bodybuilding, initially it was just like I'm kind of step, stepping back and just being a healthy guy. But then he, it's now like there's a, there's a goal again. You know, we mm. set a goal. Like, I'll, I'll let him kind of cover that in his own time because we literally yeah. only spoke about that last night. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> Well, get, um, get the exclusive on you. Know, yeah. nah, so, I like Ben. I, yeah. I, he was at the JP gym as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really briefly. briefly. I think yeah. like a few people, he was quite overwhelmed with just the sheer number of people there. Yeah, yeah. And I won't lie, like, that, I, I got the first time in a long time with gym anxiety. I was like, Fuck how the hell, hell did you get a fucking full session in, in that gym? Yeah, I, I was quite fortunate, slash, probably quite like, you done that, or can I work in? The fact that he's six foot six. I think it makes people like wants to. Or not one to disagree with you. Yeah, you're just bullying people off. I've seen him. If people don't know me, though, then they, if, if they knew me, they'd be like, shut up, Josh. Yeah, yeah fuck off. Fuck off. Um, you were just giving it, <laughs> intimidating everyone yeah. off the machines. But no, I think it's, it's what you have to do, isn't it? To yeah, work yeah. in, work yeah, in. Yeah, you did, you did well to get a session yeah. in there. Um, so obviously, bigger focus on coaching. And then outside of that, do you have any other goals in mind that you've got? So, in like, the YouTube, I really like kind of into you know mm. I'm, I'm, I'm are you a YouTuber now Josh is that what you're yeah, yeah I'm going to be full on influence <laughs> you heard it here first 1,600 subscribers bosh um, <laughs> but no like I'm enjoying that and again there's like things where I feel like there's, a, there's avenues to explore that I can like training again with people and kind of getting more content out like that which again at the minute is just not not on the table so yeah, yeah i've got a few like little ideas there but ultimately like i know that the popular thing is to say you know i'm gonna dominate the world i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that like i'm a simple guy yeah i'm going to still enjoy training i'm going to enjoy being for the most part quite alone apart from my family and uh and just kind of get myself set up for an easy life. Yeah. I want to be able to have time to, yeah, train with people, visit people, yeah. see friends who I've not, you know, friends of our kids who are, you know, two, three years old and I've seen like once or twice. And, yeah, yeah. you know, I don't want kids, but like I like to be involved yeah. in that. And like, I'd love to, I want to be more present for people Pres- like that. Present's the right word, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, and even though you said like, you haven't got like the, the big goals of, um, not so much big goals, but the, you know, I want to take over the world on that. The, you saying what you just said, what you want, yeah. it's quite actually a little bit refreshing now. Because well, the thing is, I, I, I think about this all the time, like, you know, what, what, it's a bit deep, but like, what is like, what do you want out of life? Like, I want to enjoy it. And as much as I enjoy work, if you work, if all you do is work, then even if you love it, you're still missing out. So I just want to get to a point, and I know like how many clients I need to pay my bills and to save money. Um, and I know that that then, you know, without the bodybuilding there and the intensity of that, mm-hmm. frees up a lot of time. Um, and I might find that after like a year of that, I'm fucking scratching out the walls, and then I will find someone else to do. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I think where I'm at right now, it's uh, you know the idea of winding down a little bit is not. It's not a bad. It's not idea. scary, yeah. and you know, I think there's nothing wrong with being content. Yeah, not for everyone. Some people, you know, are absolutely driven on constantly pushing, progressing, and you know, I have been in that mindset for twelve years. Yeah. Um, maybe I just need a break, or maybe I just need a. Maybe that's just where I'm heading. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. sometimes you get to that point where you, that I've been with, like in the past, I mentioned about like the DJ, and yeah, yeah. you know, you push, pu- pushed in a completely different sense, but you're working towards something for so long and then you kind of, not that you burn yourself out, but you kind of hit your ceiling yeah. and you're like, right, my focus on this subject or this topic or whatever 
is done. Yeah. I need to move on to something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've had a few questions come through on the uh, the Insta, which I, was, cool. I wasn't browsing Instagram when you were talking. <laughs> I was trying to find the questions because my battery, my uh, signal's on <clears> one bar. So I'll run through these. Um, you can go as deep as you want. Cool, cool. Uh, what would you attribute to giving you the mental framework to have such consistent drive? Swimming, a massive part of that. Um, and not, not only swimming, like the, the, the coach I had when I swam. Yeah. I think well, when you think about um, like male role models, uh, he's passed away unfortunately, but I had a coach called Tony Smith from the age of, well I knew him from 10, he didn't coach me I don't think 12, 12 to 18, so six years. Mm. At least once a day I'd see that guy. Right. And he just, he was rough and ready and like no shit knew like when I say about the psychology of coaching he was a master of that like yeah. he could say one thing to me and one thing to the guy next to me and we'd both be ready to just absolutely go do what was needed you yeah. know I remember training you know 4.30 in the morning just like on my ass, and just like I think that level of discipline and then also just like kind of the level of the mindset he sort of instilled it just created something because I didn't like my parents are great but they're not sports yeah, people so my dad's that. like a, a really high end kind of academic um, probably devastated I've gone down the street <laughs> um, and my mum's like you know one of the loveliest people ever and like a counsellor but like both of them I'm I, like I'm different completely different yeah. um, so like although there's elements of my personality the mindset I think has very much come from he certainly strikes me as probably a pivotal kind of person there yeah um, and then I think just like being an only child and like I the reason I fell in love with bodybuilding and I love bodybuilding and always will is the level of control you have and yeah. I always remember especially like you know in your 20s early 20s when you don't really know necessarily what you want out of life mm -hmm. you feel like a lot of the time you don't have much control having that empowerment and that control element of I can eat you know what I need to eat I can train how hard I need to train and I could rest you know as much as I need to rest having that to like hold on to um I loved yeah and yeah I think all of that just sort of cultivated plus I'm, I'm just very very stubborn and, and like oh I don't like to prove people wrong because I don't really care like I'll hear things every now and again and okay. you know I'll pick up on things and I'll be like we'll see yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I've done we'll see what I can do I've said about this in the past negative energy sometimes yeah. if you can use that as a little bit of a 100% like, like I'm pretty chilled about a lot of things yeah yeah um in fact about everything <laughs> yeah that's why I don't smoke weed but then just, <laughs> yeah don't don't fucking do that it's sideways but obviously like you said when you hear one or two things it's like yeah you could just put in your it's back enough. pocket yeah like it's, it's fuel to the fire yeah um, and just the, the like the, the drive to be the best version of me and again that will continue it's just like shifting the goalposts a little bit yeah you know the best version of me so far has needed to be very very kind of physically orientated um from a, from a visual point of view and kind of moving forward into next year it will be you know fitter healthier you know just generally and hopefully kind of happier because yeah it's off season vibes <laughs> off season vibes yeah I'm getting monotonous now the um, the big man Josh Law yes uh, it's not a question but he's just wanted to send a message of an appreciation for being a top coach and gent keep smashing yeah. it from Josh is a uh, like I've been extremely fortunate to work with some like amazing guys like yeah. Nathan Josh are right up there yeah um, and you know the, the kind of friendship that that's there is yeah. everything so yeah. again more reasons why I want to continue to be involved in the sport because it's just offers it, I mean it's given so much to me on every yeah. level and the relationships you build isn't it yeah and the people you meet and you know I don't speak to Josh as much at the minute but I know that, you know, when the time comes, he's a pro. Oh, yeah. We all know it. Yeah. Um, just I wish, I wish we could have got it, but not, not, not yet. Not yet. He's knocking. He's even, he's, he's ready to step up. Yeah. It's just being in the front of the right set of judges That's at exactly the right time. It. Yeah, man. 
Yeah, big up Josh. Uh, Josh will also be at the Nathan the Asher event at Planet Fitness Saturday 9th of March. Plug. Got to put that out there. <laughs> um, right, another couple on here. We have got the TNA one. <laughs> Don't so, really cover that. Uh, how many years into training did you start to notice big gains in muscle mass? So I first felt like a bodybuilder when I saw photos, I think, in 2014. So I saw, like, actually I could be someone who could hold their own mm -hmm. in, like, an open bodybuilding lineup. Yeah. So that was, what, four years deep? Four, four years. Yeah. Um, not, not like, six weeks of dieting? Like four, six weeks. Of, in the first prep I did, I went from you know a, a trunk to a basically back to a swimmer okay. <laughs> pretty much, much yeah <laughs> pretty much, just an absolutely shredded swimmer yeah um but again you know it taught me a lot and it, it also made me realize that i love the process so mm. you know i know a lot of people like wait until they think they're going to be good before they compete but what happens if you fucking hate it yeah Which i mean imagine spending four years like trying to get the size you think you need to then go through a prep and realize you fucking hate bodybuilding yeah yeah what a waste a waste of time so man. you know i i did obviously i've been training but i you know i, I wouldn't say there was like a it's probably like you could call it a two-year off season mm. where I was, I was just learning on the job yes before that you know 20 to 22 yeah. of just getting bigger and then and then i did a proper prep and and that just set, set the foundation you know it gave me something to beat mm. came back two years later again like 10 kilos heavier rinse repeat Ten rinse repeat heavier. yeah and then yeah just kept going was that like a averaged each year uh so that was over two years so the first like four years so 2010 competed took 11 off 12 competed 13 off 14 competed and then from 14 till lockdown it was every year mm. so yeah i think i first competed at 107 kilos and i think i was like 133 last time so it's not as impressive as like nace numbers and nutty i remember i listened to that podcast i was like that's some good numbers yeah, there. Yeah, it's a bit mental. Um, but yeah, it's like 20, 25 kilos in, but then again, you break it down, I've been doing this for 12 years, so, yeah. you know, it's not a bad rate of gain. It's but decent. In the first, like, the, la the latter years have been slower, as you'd expect. Uh, as you, yeah, yeah. I was going to say. And yeah. again, another reason that I know, because the fucking album I sold into this, I know, like, you mentioned the word ceiling earlier, like, I'm reaching. You feel the ceiling. Yeah. Like, I, I think... Correct me if I'm wrong. I think you're at the ceiling that you're willing to push to. There's always that, yeah. Because uh, I just know from conversation with Jamie what yeah. they wanted him yeah, to yeah. be, and you're the same fucking structure. Exactly, and that, that's the thing. Like I've, I've made my yeah. peace with that. Yeah. You know, this year I don't expect anything from shows, and the feedback I expect is, yep, nice, nice shape, good condition. Um, if you could put on ten kilos, that'd Need be more. great. Need more. You know I mean, ten Need kilos, more. mate. I've been working, you know, fucking religiously for ten years. Like it's not going to come overnight, and yeah. and again, you know, if it's not going to come overnight. I'm not a pot noodle guy, but you know, I'm not willing to put in another five, six. And it's it's just death. Yeah. At that point, that's, that's it. Isn't you know, it? the the weight you carry is 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 more worrying than anything else. Like the pressure on my heart right now is not going to be terribly friendly. No. Um, and I I just wanna I just wanna again so many reasons walk away and have everything. Yeah. Have everything. Have an incredibly positive experience of bodybuilding, have my health and have a, a future where I can look forward to. Eddie was just telling me he was, I think it was 430 pounds yeah. or something. I think when I chatted to Eddie the other day, we were like, he was like 349, I just hit 349. Yeah. And I was like struggling. He was like, yeah, well just imagine how I was when I was like 430. I was like, yeah. 430. Dead. Yeah, it was worrying it's time for mental. him. Though. Mental. Mental. Um, I'm going to ask the question, it's boring as fuck, but did you get any elbow or knee pain? Or do you get any elbow knee pain? Uh, I have. Uh, I think everyone has. Um, the best advice I could give, uh, plug, strong sports nutrition. Hey, hey, there Sup you go. Uh, support Max Joint and genuinely, like, uh, what was it? I think it was knees. They released that quite conveniently when I was having real knee issues on Jamie's hack. Um, and I remember pretty swiftly that cleared up elbows I've had um, that was a little bit more complicated uh, if you have access to ozone therapy 
that would be that was obviously the thing that helped me three sessions of that and touch wood mm. I've not had any issues since um, collagen warming up yeah Quang Lao I know I never never bought into that like yeah. a, that was very much Jordan's vibe I remember I've, I've recently got some because I've yeah. done something to my, my, my traps so oh, I've just been yeah, slamming yeah. it all on it I mean, I, I, yeah, I, again, like this, this off-season, I think something has been breaking it, like, quite convenient, you know, one thing at a time. Yeah. So, like, it was shoulder, and now it's ankle. <laughs> but so you'll, you'll get it. As long as it's one. It's yeah. only four weeks left. Yeah, yeah, that'll be fine. Four weeks, man. Stop whinging. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've done a lot. Yeah. Yeah. that lately. We've got one more, yeah. which we, we can end on, because it's quite a nice one. Um... Your biggest bodybuilding inspiration in your career so far, and we'll we'll look at that in terms of like the the guys that compete. So that, you know, okay. you follow. I I like I, I get I've I've had this question on Q and A's before. Like I've never been someone who looks at like the the big names and been inspired because mm-hmm. I think I have like I have the I have the sense to appreciate the kind of level of genetics and the sort of the difference in person yeah um i know not bodybuilding but again we mentioned rich rich would definitely be there you know in that inspirations on this journey yeah um i think kind of the three standouts competing or have competed definitely be jamie you know yeah. not not only his physique but just you know the guy he is yeah um jordan would be there because like i said i've i've known jordan since uni that was pre Instagram. That was when forums were a thing. I remember Jordan on like, I think it was like UK Muscle, and like he would just hammer home the same messages now. But back then, obviously, he wasn't anyone, and people would just be pretty much weekly tearing into him, saying like, "It's fucking stupid. Yeah. Like, what are you doing?" Like, and now it's like, "Well, look at me now, bitches." And I think like that <laughs> sort, that kind of just relentless belief. Yeah. is very very cool yeah. um, plus the guy is you know more neck and back than anything I've ever seen he, uh, d- the, the, the video we did recently everyone was just rinsing him on the side of his neck he's just, he's just like yeah I know he doesn't like himself as a bodybuilder but as a, as a bodybuilder who loves muscle you can't not fucking love it mad like um, yeah and then the, the third and probably I suppose most current relevant would be James yes. again just the work ethic yeah the fairly like unassuming nature as well mm-hmm. like uh, he doesn't go out of his way to big himself up no very much that's the work like kind of the work do the talking and I've always been someone who has respected kind of actions over words because yeah. anyone can talk a good game but who could back it up mm-hmm. and like having been I suppose like weaving in and out of his career like as I've progressed I've seen his ups I've seen his downs from afar and like yeah. just the again the where he is now and the best he's ever been I'd oh, say yeah. and just yeah it's, it's really cool to see and you can't not take kind of inspiration from that yeah no, definitely. Man. And I think the fact that like I know all three of them, and you know, I, I find it quite hard to be inspired by someone I don't know as a person. Yes. And if you kind of know that someone's good, good heart, yeah, good morals, yeah, saying, yeah. you know, that's that's a lot more. Yeah. Uh, you can take a lot relatable. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's good, man. Yeah. Well, I think on that note, obviously, you you uh, you're going to be a massive inspiration to a lot of boys out there as well. Like just because obviously what you've done with your career, coaching yourself, mm-hmm. being the big guy that you are, and uh, getting to the level you are, man. So thank you very hopefully much. Hopefully, you'll look back, and I know you won't. You're very much like what you said, James is like, you know, yeah. unassuming and doesn't really take the credit. But uh, I hope one day you can look at yourself and. and I'm, I'm sure when that. I'm like six, I'll be right, just sat on the bench in the yeah. gym and going like, oh, it's me. <laughs> "This was me. Oh, look at me." <laughs> until okay. uh, until then, mate, I'll keep my head down. Yeah. Um, no, but it's been a pleasure to have you on. Thank you, Jay. Did you it. Uh, did you want to give any shout out to? I will shout out to the, the two main sponsors I've got. If that's cool, yeah, um, Silverback. Uh, really proud to be part of their yeah. their team. Obviously, big strongman base. I think there's only a couple of us bodybuilders in there, so to be one of them is is good. I think we're coming into year three. One of the few, is it? 
One, one of the few, one of the yeah. chosen few. I'm probably more because I look like a strong man most of the time. <laughs> and they probably just got confused when they signed me up. And they go, why is this guy getting tanned all the time? Um, <laughs> and then Strom, who yeah. has been, you know, it's hard to put into words like the gen, like the support, like the, the team. Obviously, you know, you know, you're part of HR. Yeah, it's very similar. And yeah, it's a yeah. good, it's a fantastic environment to be in. So, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't be happier with. You know, again, like I like to keep things fairly intimate and with with good people, and I'm yeah. lucky to have that. It's got that family environment to it, isn't it? Very much so. Like, and I know that you know when I when I finish, like nothing or nothing. Like they they don't care. Yeah. You know, they care about you as a person. Yeah. yeah. And there's no pressure, which I is is really lucky. So, yeah, big up those guys because I couldn't. You know, quite. I'm sure I couldn't have progressed as far without yeah. the support and the. You know, the stuff the damn good. Check them out. There we go. Well, thank, thank you very much, mate. Thank again. you, brother. Appreciate it. Right, um, it. Boxed it off. Yeah. So that's another... Smashed it. What a productive day. Mate. mate I'm really happy to be on, though, because um, you know, I said before, I'm struggling to find good podcasts at the minute, and every time yours comes out, I'm there. I uh, appreciate that. On it. So, I really enjoyed previous episodes. Hopefully, I've lived up to the previous guests. Definitely. And, definitely. Yeah. Well, you're, you're as big as them, anyway. <laughs> so, I'm sitting here like a little fucking child. <laughs> When I walked away from body, but then I got back into him. I'm like, oh, shall I fucking just give up? Because they're quite us sitting next to these boys. No. no. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for tuning in. Check Josh out on Insta, on YouTube. He's going to be documenting all his prep yeah. when that begins. So that'll be exciting to see. Um, and subscribe to the channel. Follow the Spotify. Give it a five star rating. TBSP for any money off heavy duty gym wear. Um, and by the time this drops, we probably would have announced the next sponsor for the Beautiful Struggle podcast, which is Cookie Champions. That's Josh's camera, so I'm all right. right. He's, he's gone. <laughs> so that's the Cookie Champions, uh, which previously were the Cookie Dealer. Look out for uh, discount codes, etc., being launched via the socials. And uh, I will see you on the next episode. Peace.